than worship to me is a time set apart in which to honor and magnify God for who he is. Since we were created to worship, I take it as a privilege to give thanks to God for his unmerited favor, his undying kindness, and the beautiful things he has done in our lives each day. When we worship, it is important that we acknowledge the fact that God is greater than any circumstance or obstacle that may sometimes beset us. As we put ourselves and our wants aside and worship our Creator in spirit and truth, His peace falls upon us and like a ripple effect, joy and hope follows behind, giving us the endurance to go on. Praising and worshiping God is a very gratifying and awesome experience, whereas it is only you and Him and nothing else in the world matters. a place for those who wait. Heaven holds a place for those people who can wait, right? And net, read it, I'll read it again for emphasis, Mark 4, 23 to 34, he says, if any man have ears, hey, yes. if any man have ears, yes. let him hear. And it sounds simple, huh? If you have ears, well, hear. You know, all of us have ears and none of us are listening. It's, it's amazing. If any man has ears, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed yes. to what you hear. With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. Yes. And unto you that hear, if you hear, more shall be given. Yes. If you hear, you get more. For he that hath, if you have, right? To him shall be given. If you listen and you have, you get more. Right? Amen. But he that hath not, if you don't have, like some of us, we already don't have. Listen to what God says. He says, from him shall be taken even that which he has. Yes. So the little that you have, God will take that and give it to somebody who already has more. You ever heard, John, of people, I know already have nothing, it's just ooh, rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. You, you ever heard that? It sounds like that's what it's saying. If you're not willing to listen, the little that you have will be taken away and given to those who have more. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God is counterintuitive. It really is. It is as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Yes. And then should sleep and rise night and day. And then the seed should spring up and grow up. And he knows not how. That's right. I don't care how smart they get bigger. They still can't figure it out. Yeah, they understand the mechanics of it, but like, why? How? Like, how does the seed just take root and grow up? Only God knows, right? Yeah. Hey, for the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. First the blade, and then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear, right? Yes. But when the fruit is brought forth, immediately we put sickles to it because the harvest is come. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what comparison shall we compare it with? Right? Mm -hmm. So he said, The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. If you buy seeds from Home Depot, check the size of a mustard seed. John is like right here on the tip of your finger and it says when it is sown in the earth it is less than all the seeds that be in the earth he says but when it is sown though it groweth up and then it become greater than all the herbs and shooteth out great branches 
so that the falls of the year may lodge under the shadow of it. Imagine it. Imagine it if you can. This thing, this tiny thing here, produces a thing as big as at least a third of this room. This little thing produces a thing as large as a third of this room. And with many such parables, spake he the word unto them as they were able to hear it. Because after a while, we can't take it no more. Like our little brains are flooded past them. We can't take it anymore. And so he just preached to them as they were able to hear it. But without a parable, speak he not unto them. Just think about it. If Paul said, is, is unlawful to speak about the things I saw and heard. Imagine if Jesus would speak it to us. John, we'd be stone crazy. So he has to explain it in a way that is simplified, like simplified, simplified, that we'll understand it. And even then we don't understand it, right? Then the Bible says, when they were alone, he expounded on all these things to his disciples. And in essence, we are disciples of him and it's our role to help to expound on it, to make it a little bit more clear. All that I read, part of it that I want to extract is the planting part of it. The planting part of it. Because this entire process is a process of waiting. Understand it. It's a process of waiting, right? Have you heard of the saying, the patience of Job? The patience of Job, right? And he brought it to the fore this Thursday when Deacon Osiris and Don were practicing and Don was talking, right? She's is is like role playing. But she said a critical thing. She said, But I keep praying, she said, right? You guys remember? Get out of it if you remember. She said, I keep praying and I keep praying and then nothing happens. And then Deacon Osiris had Don to explain to her. Right? Mm-hmm. Is in yes, and she's in Belize. Dad is in Belize because we're doing it on Zoom, Zoom so yes. people from all over could tune in. Then the Canisarius had to explain. He says, "Yes, sometimes you have to wait, right?" And we know Pastor Smith told us she was driving and she was getting into an accident, like getting into the accident, and she prayed, and God averted the accident yes. immediately. So sometimes the response is immediate, as you know. Sometimes you have to wait, right? Sometimes he don't answer it. And then years later he say, I'm glad he didn't answer that, right? Oh, I was praying for this man, tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, I'm glad I didn't get that man, right? We know how that is. Sometimes he don't answer it because he knows better. But the part I want to focus on is the waiting part. That's the hard part. If you pray and he answer it quickly, we're all good, right? Yes. But for a lot of us, a lot of the times, the prayer involves some waiting. Amen. So the passage explains to us that the kingdom of God is for those who are patient. Amen. Man, if we had the time, I could list all the passages in the Bible, Pastor, where it actually says that the promise is for those who are patient. Yeah. I could list them one after the other, but I list only one. Hebrews 10, 36, it says, For you have need of patience, it says, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Amen. Right? And it says, might, notice the word, you, you might receive the promise after you have been patient, right? Look, heaven holds a place for those who wait. And he said, right, so is the kingdom of God as a man who should cast seed into the ground and then he sleep, and then night and day, night and day, and the seed is growing up, right? And I like Jesus because most of his examples were agrarian. Because I said, like, man, God is really God, Pastor. Because if you wrote a book, right, in 1462, like us now trying to read that book, nah, the examples wouldn't be valid. It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be interesting. 
Your book couldn't last like 400 years, right? Jewel, if we write a book now, 2021, by 2041, 2051, eh, our examples, the things we are talking, they'll be archaic. People won't even, eh, they won't be able to, to, to comprehend it. They won't, look, this book was started writing before Christ, long before Christ. This book was being written after Christ, Pastor. And look, for except for a few parts of it that, yes, you need some help understanding. Hey, we basically understand what is written in this book. And I like Jesus because he knew that the agrarian examples he used would stand the test of time. As all of us understand it, that if you plant something, you can't expect to reap the next day. Absolutely not. I've never seen something boom, ready, except Jack and the Beanstack. Right? Yeah. But for us, ain't no Beanstack. Everything that we plant takes time to grow up. Right? Yeah. Believe me when it says that it takes, the kingdom of heaven takes patience. We have to learn to wait. Right? Anything worth anything anything with value takes time to grow right to produce so we can harvest it and believe me when i say so is the kingdom of god Amen. it is literally like a tiny mustard seed that mushrooms great to hold so many mansions right but you have to delay the gratification it could give until it could give it in full you, you understand? Yeah. Until they could give it in full, right? Yeah. The thing is, if you delay the gratification, it means you are saving the pleasure for later. Yeah. Notice I said pleasure because most of us cannot resist pleasure. It's hard to resist. If, if, you, if you like chocolate, it's, <laughs> if you like chocolate, when you see chocolate, you can't resist it's chocolate, right? If you if you like alcohol, you like vodka. You can only see vodka. If you see the liquor shop, you, you don't even have to see the vodka. You just have to see the sign liquor, and you'll be bolting into that shop. Hey, indeed, right? Indeed, whatever it is that you take pleasure out of, it is hard to resist that thing. That's where addictions come from. Yeah. But if you if you delay, right? If you if you withstand that pressure, that stress to indulge in that pleasure, you know that pleasure deacon could grow into something more beautiful, more meaningful, more rewarding, more lasting. Yes. Pleasure could morph into something bigger than just pleasure, right? Indeed, pleasure could move from the temporary and the temporal into something more. Pleasure can actually turn into joy. Joy, three layers, J-O-Y. It could morph into joy when it's bigger, it is more encompassing, and it lasts longer, right? It lasts longer. And this is precisely the point that we're trying to get from this passage where it says the kingdom of God requires waiting, right? The kingdom of God requires waiting. Why? Because there is no pleasure in the kingdom of God, right? There is only joy. Again, you're looking at me quizzically. You're looking at me, what? The Bible don't have no pleasure. No. The kingdom, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where it says the kingdom of God has pleasure. But I could read to you from Luke 15, 10 in the context of the parable of the last coin where it says, and when she finds it, she calls together her friends and neighbors to say, rejoice with me for I have found my last coin. In the same way I tell you, there is joy in the presence of God's angels over one sinner who repents. It didn't say there is pleasure in heaven. Like we started out saying, pleasure is temporal. It's small, it's short, it's like, boom, bam. All of us that know, we are growing in there. 
I mean, you and Jerry are not good. But the rest of us are good in here. Right? We understand what that means, John. It don't last that long. It don't last that long. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But John, it could morph into something bigger. It could morph into joy. But if it'll morph into joy, it takes a little delay. It takes a little waiting for pleasure to morph into joy. So is the kingdom of heaven. So is the kingdom of heaven. If you get into this thing thinking, oh Lord, I sit but I better go to church. Lord, I met my cabinetta tomorrow. Well, you might be in for a little surprise. God is an on time God. Yes, yes he, is. Yes, he is. is. But if you think, whoa, we're do next week. I can go to church. God, I give you money. <laughs> well, your landlord and you might be a little surprised if the two of you are thinking God will give you money for that. The thing don't work that way. If you've been in this long enough, you understand that this thing is for the long haul. That's what this thing is for, Deacon. It's not a hurry cup of thing, like we say, four strike. No, this thing is for those who wait, right? The thing is with this, right? Few will be that find this way. Yes, Pastor, A, many people cannot believe gratification, right? I'll give you a good example. Like, and, and my wife is right here to, to, to agree with me. Whenever you give the money, you know, you give the money, you give the money a hundred times. Whenever you give the money, she don't spend it. I don't know where she, well, she probably got it from her mom. She didn't get it from me. Whenever she get, <laughs> because whenever she get money, she don't spend it. She save it. She have a fat bank account. No robber now. She have a fat bank account because she don't be spending the money. She spend it sparingly. And she is so frugal, it's not funny, right? So I said, this girl amazes me because she's a kid. But she's come to understand the concept of delayed gratification. John, I'm not there yet. <laughs> John, I'll be 55 at the end of this year and I'm still not there yet. I must need another 55 to get to that point. But this girl understands the concept of delayed gratification. John? Like with me, and I'm certain with some of us, like like money especially is like when butter touch hot bread. You ever seen? You ever seen? It's gone. Butter and hot bread, right? Again, that's why I don't invest in the stock market. Like sometimes I'm tempted. I said, "Ooh, Amazon looking good. Hey, five dollars a share. I should put in like a two hundred dollars." I said, "I didn't have to wait till I die to collect." That's <laughs> that's why I don't like life insurance. You can't get nothing till you're dead. Yeah. That's when you are getting when you're dead. Exactly. John is is, is is delayed gratification. But I'm telling you, it is a hard, hard concept, right? To even come to grips with and then to practice. To practice? Hey, it is similarly hard or even harder than with things that are spiritual. Right? Pastor, if we can't do it with things that are temporal, simple things, we can't even do it. But how could we do it then with things that are spiritual? Right? With things that we can't see. Notice Jesus kept harping on hair. Hair! Because you could hear, but you can't see it. You could hear about it, but you can't see it. And if we can't delay the gratification with things that we could see, Pastor, how will we delay for things we can't even see? How? Holy Spirit. Exactly. To the Holy Spirit. But my point is, it is difficult to delay gratification. It is difficult to delay gratification. It literally means a few there will be that will find that narrow way that leads to salvation. I said last week that all this life is is just to prepare you for the eternal and so it's just to prepare you to be saved all this is is to prepare you for salvation what jesus says is a narrow little path few there be that find it so 
in finding the path, you have to rely on the, the concept of delayed gratification. Means, really anybody will find that path. Because ain't nobody going to wait for no Jesus. Right? They won't. They won't. And they won't find the path. Instead, the majority will take the wide way, the broad path that leads to destruction. That is literally what we will do. Because nobody wants to wait for no narrow path. Might as well go down this wide path. And then I understand it, right? I understand it. I said, let me put myself in people's shoes. I mean, if I'm hungry, like I'm really hungry, I haven't eaten for hours, and I'm hungry and I get home, and then when I get home, you show me an egg. So the red stand up by the door and say, you hungry? <laughs> and she, because she said, all right, I have here an egg. She, she said, all right, if you're hungry, you could eat this egg now, or you could wait so that this egg could hatch into a chicken. <laughs> And that she says, and then that chicken will have more eggs. And then that chicken will have more chickens too. So you can have this egg, or you can wait, and then you'll have lots of eggs and lots of chickens, right? And it makes sense, right? Cognitively, logically, it's true. An egg could turn into a chicken that could produce more eggs and a lot more chickens. But don't you tell me that when I'm hungry? <laughs> exactly! Yeah. It won't turn out so good. It won't turn out so good. I have no chicken. <laughs> no chicken. I will eat that egg. Hey, you know that is precisely, literally, what is happening to the majority of us, John. Pastor, you know that is, we are trying to give people an egg and tell them, no, eat the egg. No, eat the egg. Make the egg hatch. And then when the egg hatch, you have another chicken and another egg. They might stone you with that egg. <laughs> hey, I eat that egg. They might stone you with that egg. John, understanding what we are in. Pastor, you're teaching us to witness. This is what we are dealing with. This is what we are dealing with. Few people even understand the concept of delaying gratification, of waiting, of being patient. You get the blessing by and by. People say, by and by. Well, you will go by and by. That's what they say. So it makes sense for, for us to understand what it is we are dealing with. You're wondering why you can't get nobody to come to church. People who used to come to church don't want to come back to church. They cannot understand and deal with the concept of delayed gratification. They're not telling us, but part of the reasoning may be that whatever they want from God, they want it. No! And he might be taking, he might say, you didn't take long one, you better write there. We don't know what their mind processes are. But we can, I can assure you that it must be something akin to that. We are trying to show them that this egg, right, could produce a lot more eggs, a lot more chickens. And they'd say, no, I'm hungry. No, it reminds me of that J.G. Wentworth pastor. You heard this before. You ever heard that J.G. Wentworth commercial? He said, it is my money. And I want it now. Yes. This, this entire world, this life, is a J.G. Wentworth commercial is what this is, right? I see it all the time at work. Like, we've been there for years, right? We qualify too. We have master's degrees. But little kids that just started working hey it's even a hard come birth and make more money than me boy what you mean because is everybody wanted no you, you you haven't even spent 10 years oh, oh you mean have you guys seen that at your yes. job yes. uh -uh, because that's the new nurses they want to make what you make even though you've been there for so many years that's what we are dealing with nobody wants to wait so if god has a principle that the kingdom of God is about waiting and patience and delayed gratification. Guess what? The people ain't gonna make it in. They ain't gonna make it in. Somehow, somewhere, we have to get them to understand this concept of delayed gratification. Otherwise, it'll be fewer finding that narrow road. They can. You are trying to convince somebody with an egg that they should wait for that egg to hatch into a chicken they won't wait 
Like I said, they might stone you with that egg. They don't understand because they're hungry and they want it. No. Give you an example. Mark 10, 29. In the context is the rich young man. And then Peter began to see to him, right? Look, we have left everything and then followed you. It, it, Pastor, it's a valid thing that Peter told him. We left everything and followed you. And then Jesus replied, he said, Truly I tell you, no one has left their home or their brothers or their sisters or their mother or their father or their children or fields for my sake and for the gospel will fail to receive a hundredfold in the present age houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and fields along with persecution it's strange that he put that right in there but he did put it in there and in the age to come eternal life If Jesus is promising us, right, that if we stick to this thing, he is promising that this thing will have a blessing. This thing will have a reward. Yeah. Pastor, he has to promise us that. Yeah. Because frail as we are, with our turmoil with delayed gratification, even we would leave. Even we would leave. I heard a joke this morning. Um... The wife got up and told the husband, aren't you going to church? The husband said, no, I ain't going to no church today because the people at the church don't even like me and the church is boring and it is a drag. And then the lady said, I'll give you three reasons why you should go to church. He said, the people there don't hate you, people like you, one. The next thing church is that boring, is uplifting. And then three, you are the pastor. <laughs> Hey, Deacon, if you get to the stage where you have to beg the pastor to come to church, <laughs> hey, you're in some serious trouble. Yeah. Well, pastor, well, pastor, let's be honest. Sooner or later, we will get to that stage where you, you have to be trying to convince the pastor, compel the pastor to come to church. Deacon, that is what we are facing. See, that is what we are dealing with, right? But, like, look, in my head, I keep one dichotomy, right? We have to keep who we have even while we are trying to get more. Because you could lose what you have trying to get more. You ever read that thing with God on the boat? So, so most of the time this preaching is for you first. Yes, amen. And then for the others who might be listening now, yes. not Christians yes. that say, yes. yeah, look at what this man is saying. Yes. Hey, but this is for you first. You. There is a reward to this. Yeah, if you continue to wait, exactly, exactly. Then I said, Oh, when I read it, I said, Oh, it's like the matter of the tithes and the offering, right? Because let's be frank, it's the hardest part. I don't know about you. I'll come to church, I could sing, I could beat the drum, I'll play with Julia all day. It's not a problem for me. The tithes, though, Pastor, the tithes, though. When you get to the point where the tithes are not an issue with you is when you arrive. Because a lot of people think they arrive in this business. When you get to the point where the tithes are not an issue is when you arrive. Because when you get to that point is when you, I think, have come to grips with the concept of delayed gratification that you understand. 10% and God is a God of multiplication. Listen to this carefully. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Think about it, right? See, it's like, man, eh, 10%. And that thing morphs and mushrooms and blossoms and flourishes into a giant tree, right? The time I said, oh, that's what he meant about the tithes and the offerings. Because I just read it this morning. Where you have a blessing on that. Yes, yes. The 10% morphs it blooms it flourishes and he said he said i will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing there shall not be room enough to receive it Deacon, if i told you he's lying i'll be lying i'll be lying like we don't talk too much but pastor you believe me when i tell you 
that God is not lying. Yes, yes. John, he is not lying. He cannot lie. He, he cannot lie. Yes. Gil, hey, like sometimes when we get the news, I say, nah, God, you're too good. Amen. You are too good. Yeah, there are sprinklings of bad news, because I'm not saying that. Like we got some news about Asia, and I said, I told her, God is too good. It brings tears to my eyes. He is too good, Pastor. Yes, Out the blue, God. boom. I said, no. And it's not only money. Because that remind us all the time that it's not only money. You say it all the time. John, he will literally open the windows of heaven and pour out all sorts of things. Yes. I'm telling you, the kingdom of God is about faith and waiting and believing and acting. It goes for us first. Amen. And then the people who hear us, and yes. they'll be saved because they hear us, then we could tell them and testify yes. about the goodness of God in our lives. Amen. So I'll just recap. I, I, I normally don't recap, but I think this is critical for, for me to recap, right? Amen. Uh, plants teach us some of the principles by which the kingdom of God is governed. Stupid plants teach us some of the principles. A mustard seed is more valuable if you wait. Likewise, patience, waiting, delayed gratification, it'll bring us great blessings and rewards. It will. You are not doing this in vain. I think, man, for years I've been going to that church. You are not doing this in vain. There'll be a reward. He just said it. No. And there'll be a reward later. Yeah. Now and later. Just think about it. You say, no, no you're right. That's God. You got exactly, Pastor. You have to be discerning, but it's God. There is a distinction between joy and pleasure. The kingdom of God is about joy. This world, this life is about pleasure, pleasure right? The things that are here and now, the immediate it produces pleasure and i'm not saying pleasure is not a good thing it's a good thing right the god wouldn't have made the body to be able to receive it is a good thing but wait and patience and delayed gratification produces more than pleasure it produces true joy yeah. right okay. if life is a race to salvation then this race is indeed not for the swift but for those who can endure to the end. Amen. Right? Amen. Paul said in 2 Timothy, I have fought a good fight. Yes. I have finished my course. He said, I have kept the faith. He said, henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, Paul is saying, but to all them also that love is appearing. Amen. Amen. If you too want to be able to see you finish your course and you kept your faith, if you want to reap the rewards and the blessings, wait. Be patient. Don't leave the church. Don't leave Jesus. Don't drop out of this movement because you are not immediately getting what you want and what you ask for. Wait. Amen. Your pleasure will turn into joy. Don't leave the church. Stay in the vine. Yes. Whatever pleasure it is you are seeking, whatever it is you are seeking, you will get it if you wait. Amen. Hey, heaven holds a place. It's not me said so. He said, I have a place for you. He said, yeah. heaven holds a place for those who wait. Oh, and the first step to accept, to guarantee, is to accept, yeah. is to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Amen. And don't listen to the scoffers. This is not for you guys, essentially. It's for the people who be watching us on TV or watching us on their phone, right? Because there'll be scoffers who say, ah, phew, ta, ta, they'll just be waiting. That's what the scoffers will say, yeah. right? 
But believe me what the Bible says. That the day and the hour will come like a thief in the night. Joel, Joel, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Right? Because it came to you like a thief in the night. Pastor, Ned knows what I'm talking about. All of us know, if we remember John, that this thing comes like a thief in the night. Jesus said, my hour has come. Why? Because he's God. He knows the day and the hour. He said it. He told them. He said, my hour has come. Is He understands. He knows because he knows all things. But for us, we won't know the day or the hour. All we know is, like Jesus, it will come. It will come. When it comes, though, yes, where will we go? She just sang it, where will I go? But yes, where will you go? For us, we've said the sinner's prayer, we're assured. Where will I go but to the Lord? Hey, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Because absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I'm telling you, they can, it'll be sad, not for us, because we won't know where we are and be full of joy. For some people, that time, that day, that hour will come, Pastor, and they won't be prepared. They'll yes. be like them seven virgins. When the bridegroom came and they had no oil in their lamps. Yes. Darkness. Yes. Darkness began. And this is literally what this thing is. Those who have the ears to hear, let them hear. Because people don't want to hear. Hey, if this life is a race to heaven, we should be preparing or be prepared salvation for salvation because there's two choices is either eternal joy but joy everlasting or eternal damnation so the question is how is your race right how is your preparation yes. right if you want to be sure where you will go, hey, it is simple, it's profound, but it's simple. It's simple. You just have to say the prayer and accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. And Deacon will come up and lead us in that prayer. For those of us here, we've said the prayer, we could still say it. But if you're watching us on your television, if you're listening to us on your phone, hey, this might be your opportunity. Deacon will lead us in the prayer. Amen. And if you so feel, if you've been moved by this message, say the prayer. Say the prayer. No man knows the time or the hour. Amen? Amen. 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 Again, a very blessed and strong message. Yes, Praise yes, God. Yes, yes. If you're here today and you need healing in your body and or deliverance, Father God, I pray that you touch us all from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet. Yes, Cover us yes. with that precious blood of Jesus, the healing blood, the delivering blood. As we pray in Jesus' name. For those who need salvation, just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I know that I am a sinner. I believe you sent your son Jesus who died on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. Satan, I renounce you. Your demons on assignment against me and every demonic spirit. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Praise God. <laughs> Romans, hallelujah. Romans 10, 9, 10 says, If we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, that we are saved. Amen. You say, welcome to the kingdom of God. The angels in heaven are rejoicing. And praise God for that message. <laughs> Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loves is born of God, 
He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Share some love today. Go with God and go in peace. Amen. Amen.